everybody, Mr. Steve back, and welcome. This is going to be the 4.0 Alpha Transition to 4.0 Beta, and even though this is the Alpha version, I've got a few things that are kind of buggy. I'm going to show you anyways, and they're going to be transitioned into 4.0 Beta, and then you know eventually a more stable release as the community uh, gets involved and we start doing our bug reports. So I'll just jump over to scripting. And we can go ahead and pull up the editor, excuse me, the preferences. And once you've done that, I think I got my, I got this way too big. Yeah, I want that more like 1.15 perhaps. There we go, that's a little bit better. Let's look at all crazy. So go over to editing and let's scroll down to the text editor. This is called the auto close character pairs. It's really cool. Now this version I've tested a few times on the on the different 4.0s that are available, and I guess I just don't have the the one uploaded yet because I usually get all the updates. Uh, but this one, just make sure to save this and just kind of minimize it. It's very buggy. I'm gonna pull up a template for Python. You can do that. Just anything you want. Now if I just go to a blank space and I hit something like Shift and the brackets, uh, it's gonna automatically put whatever I put here in brackets, and then so on as I go down, the different types, you can code out this way, and then like this. And you'll be able to code. Now, the regular version that was demoed, you're able to select certain things, like change your code, and then shift whatever, put your brackets in. But for some reason, this one is actually deleting. I don't like that, but it is what it is. And the regular version won't do that. But that's a really cool option, and on to the next. All right, and this one's pretty cool. So if I'm in here, and it's just going to do something here. It's bugging me out. Let's add a little bevel here, and let's... Ooh, I don't want to play the timeline. I have not switched this one up and fixed it up yet, so I'm going to go to... Key maps and go to right click search. There we go, all that fun stuff. So, this is just how I know it. And I want to extrude along the nominals and kind of bring that bad boy in. Yeah, looks kind of cool. You can always turn on cavity, make things look a little better. Get the valley and the ridge factor there. That way, you can kind of see things more defined. Now, if you control tab, you go into vertex paint, you now have an attribute area. Okay, and this is going to give you the option that once you start coloring in, you can add your colors, very cool. And so if I wanna add blue, I can do that. Uh, face corner, whatever you wanna do, hit okay. And then you can start coloring in. Now this, you can go back and forth between the attribute and the color add anything you want you can extend this out and just add a whole bunch of different um different colors to it hit okay and just kind of go back and forth and mess with these and change them around do whatever you want to do and now you've got that option now i'm going to switch over to blender 3.6 so you can see the comparison so if i go over let's grab 3.6 if it'll come back there we go and so if I control tab here and go to vertex paint, I do not have access to that. And it would not have had the full screen like I do now. And remember control space bar will actually give you a full full screen. So now we don't have to leave that area like we used to and pull up other panels to do our coloring in. And the good news is this is actually also going to work when you do weight paint. And start painting in weight paint. You've got your groups right here. This is probably somewhat of a game changer. And I'm going to have to update probably when 4.0 uh, beta comes out. I'll update some of my add ons, especially the cracks add on. It's going to be wild. I've got some major plans for cracks. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be probably just call it cracks four or something just to go in line with the 4.0 release. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's pretty cool. You guys got that. It's a good thing. All right, actually, there is one more thing to go after with this. 
and it's active also in texture paint so you'll be able to come in here and you can add a specular as you would normally um, just more accessible here and you can go between that and single image and change a few different things and just kind of have access to these if you just add a few different things you could change base colors and different stuff and you can kind of color it and do what you want to do with that that's really cool very good there we go you got to save all images there as well that's nice you can throw the roughness in and change a few different things and save all that and that is cool and it's also available in sculpting but it's kind of grayed out until you pull out your t panel and let's see let's go to paint i don't really use this very often and it's supposed to not be grayed out there we go yeah so you got access to it here as well and for another fun feature i mentioned this in my last update but this is pretty cool so when you do the add modifier you've got this drop down menu or rather it's a popover so you can actually move it anywhere you want i didn't show that i just kind of figured people would know but you know i was doing this tutorial i'm like yeah i might not know and so if you wanted to grab a modifier you can just click on this and start typing like I just want to add a bevel now and hit enter. It's intuitive. And now you can do it that way. And you know how you set up your bevels. Give it like four segments, pull down the shading, harden the normals, enable the auto smooth, shade auto smooth, add that to favorites. And that little thing will go away, the warning will go away. And let's pull down the geometry, go to arc don't necessarily have to have that the clamp overlap can come off and i want to hold down shift and just kind of move this in so i can kind of mess with that bevel make it as sharp as i want that's nice okay but that's cool so you've got a little pop over here you can kind of go through see the generated the different options here you go in here with the hair and you've got all the different options for your hair as well and you should just be able to put in let's drop this back whoa i didn't mean to do that pull that back out yeah so there you go restore the curve segment length it just pops it in there it doesn't matter if you're over here in this area or not so that's nice and there's a different update now i'm over here on 3.6.1 and i'm gonna hit control space bar and go to full screen and they say that yeah okay so the new window i don't even do that i don't select new window but this was a user request and this is kind of grayed out in full screen here let's see if the 4.0 has got something different for us Control space bar window yeah so it's not grayed out anymore so now if you're in full screen you can create a new window and that is a user request right click menu will pull that up but i'm left click so i'm weird like that i was trained early on by cross mind studios and he got me ruined on that so i don't do uh, right click selection for any anything i don't use the context menu because i actually made add-ons that do that kind of stuff for me so i've got some add-ons to do that and just to go back over this the shift a menu is one of those classic things inside of blender so now if we hit shift a i can actually type m o n and get the monkey and just instantly get them and hit uh, hit enter to drop that into the 3d viewport so shift a and just type in uv uv sphere it's an it's an intuitive automatic search menu now and I think that is pretty cool, and it works with whatever you want to get. Uh, if I want to type in VOR for Vortex, I can throw in a Vortex and uh, do whatever I want to do with this thing. All right, so that's all excellent and very cool. And just for fun, if you come up here uh, with your scene collection in the Outliner, this is called the Outliner, uh, you can hit Shift-A and just open up pretty much everything 
and get a good look at what's going on. And then Shift A will close it. So if you just normally drop it down, you have to individually open all these, but Shift A will do that for you, which is pretty cool. And of course, um, I did have a little bug out, if you will, pun intended, with the last update I did on 4.0 a few days ago. And let me just switch this to the geometry nodes editor. It was a big pain because I was trying to search and I got used to shift a S and this S keeps popping up and that's very, very pain, big pain in the butt. So shift a, and I just type in extrude and I instantly get the extrude mesh. That is efficient. That is nice. I really like that a lot. Like what else do you need in life? So shift a, and then I can do is face smooth and pull up the is face smooth, you know, and have some fun. Yeah, so that works nice. So it's very intuitive. You can do that now everywhere and just shift a everywhere, everywhere, shift a, everything, shift a, everything. And so if I want to possibly switch on and I haven't, I haven't done anything with this 4.0, but if I want to type in for my uh, extra objects, pro probably going to crash. I get that crashy feeling here. And now I've got my extra objects here. Like I want the polygon, just shift A and type in poly. And it's going to give you a list of what's going on. Or shift A curve. And I get a, less, a nice list of all these. Maybe I want the Rome in there, which is great. Never used that before. Uh, back to object mode, but this is wonderful, very nice, and you can do some build out. So Shift A join, and it's going to give you join strings or join geometry. And I don't have Node Wrangler enabled. That's frustrating. Let's just do that, and then I can do my control right lazy click. Very cool. So, anyways, there you go, guys. That's nice new menu. And I think this is getting on towards like 12 minutes. So I'm going to end up doing another update. And I think I'll cut it off here. And hopefully by the weekend I'll do another update. Because there's tons and tons of said updates to do. Some of them are performance. I would just say look up some of these things yourself um, on the wiki, Blender Wiki. You can have some of those performance updates. Like there's milliseconds on things that are very important to people. And so I'll probably do a, I'll probably do a, uh, an overall tutorial on some of that stuff later on, just not right now. I just like to do interface, main functions, things like that, functionality, you know, key maps, and I go over geometry nodes, updates, and all that cool stuff. And if you didn't get the memo, the is face smooth, uh, there is no more, I'm just going to type it in. You type that in now and try to get is shade smooth. It's not there. That's been replaced by is face smooth. And then your set shade smooth is now able to do edges and face. You can turn it on, off, and this is kind of redundant, but you've got this as well. So there you go, guys. I really appreciate y'all watching. Like, subscribe, uh, check out my Blender Market. We've got some add-ons there. I do support the development fund highly. So, and let me grab over here. So I've got the cracks add-on. Let me see, control space bar, jump back over. We got Philogix PBR Painter Pro, which is amazing program. I don't have all that. I'm not gonna go baking all that right now, but I do have an affiliate link for them and that does support the channel definitely i've got the bevel magic which is pretty fun and i've got the lm studio and lm studio is the light magic studio it's very easy to work with i've got presets you can just throw in scenes effectively you can throw in ies lighting you can set up your camera it's very cool i don't think there's a camera in the scene so i'm just gonna add a camera boom very cool how it just adds in. And then you get all these nice depth of field, everything else, thirds. 
Uh, it's all pretty much just set up for you. You can automatically grab a focus object, turn on your depth of field. You can change it here. You can change the camera size, a bunch of different things, clip start. Uh, focus camera is an algorithm that I built in, and it's going to focus on the closest object to the camera, which just happens to be this edge right here for the plane. And so it pulled that in. Right, very cool. Um, it doesn't even stop there. I've got the light pin set up here, and it's not going to work in 4.0. You got to go to 3.6 earlier. I'll update that at some point. Um, HDRI, go in and change all the lighting and the exposure, if you will. You can change the filmic, everything else, and then the Light Magic Studio does a cool thing. It grabs each individual light, tells you what it is, gives you all of the options that you need for that light. You can switch the light type. Here, uh, there's a ton. You can click Use Nodes if you want to build out a node system for it. You can store object data properties, like for this camera. I want to select this camera. I can add the data property, and then I can rotate that up, add that data property, and then go back and forth between those. I can do that with lights, the light color, the position, all kinds of data. It's very, very, very powerful. And then I've also got the presets here. This is cool. You just throw in preset lighting. I like this one a lot. It's my shadow light. This is a light via uh, a used node setup. So once you drop in that shadow light, it will actually pop up. And you'll see shadow light one. And I think I don't have scene lights on, so that definitely doesn't help. You can't see anything. And there we go. So with the scene lights on, now we can play with the exposure and bring that down. The shadow light is here, but if I come down, and I haven't used this in a while, but there's a grab feature, so it's called grab light. If I just select that, it's going to make that the active object. And then if I hit G and Z, it's probably hidden. And so I can throw that there, and it adds a really cool background, and there's tons of other things you can do. Uh, you can change the radius of this light. You can change the pattern, all kind of cool stuff, and you can pull up the node editor um, for that. Let's see. Let me go into the shader editor here, and then you'll see the add a light, excuse me, the shadow light here and you'll be able to like modify whatever you want there you go guys Let's pick this up on the blender market it's a very powerful add-on i'm just barely scratching the surface with what it's actually capable of doing uh, you can append things in either 3d cursor or at the world origin you can pull in you know a bunch of different lights and add all kinds of different colors instantaneously that's really cool so go check it out support the channel thank you guys for watching see you in the next tutorial lesson.